Hey, boys and girls, ladies and gents, it's Corey West coming to you live and in living color from Harlem, Uptown, New York. Yes, welcome to our first episode of Life Uptown with me, Corey. And I have my special guest, John. Hi, everybody. Hi. So John is my best friend, and many friends of mine have been so overly curious about our friendship. We were partners at one time years ago, decades ago, but we've been friends for 32 years. And a lot of people wonder, how are you guys friends? And I thought he would be a great guest and really someone who knows me well to kind of kick off um, up, life Uptown with Corey. I thought he would be the best guest. So welcome, John. Thank you, Corey. Thanks for doing this. Absolutely. I know. He's a little nervous, everybody. So, John, I mean, you know, a lot of people always are very curious about our friendship. What do you think is the foundation of developing a friendship after being partners? What, what creates our unusual, to some, not all, but to some, what do you think creates our friendship to be so long-lasting and sustaining? Well, I think I'd have to go way back to when we first met. Um, and um, I think we were both young and we were both um, in college and we were meeting other people through relationships with friends and um, getting to know different people. And I think when I first met you, one of the things I connected with most was that you were so engaging and so friendly and open to meeting new people. And that really lit a spark in me. Um, but I think as we developed our relationship and then um, even when we broke up, we actually didn't speak for a good year. So there was a time where we went through a tumultuous period and didn't really speak to each other. But I think over time I realized many things about you and took I probably took you for granted a little bit at times, um, but I learned about you more over the years. And I think now I understand who you are as a person and I accept you for who you are. And I, I probably in the years past used to be embarrassed a little bit when you tried to be funny and um, uh, or you tried to engage poor people or you would push me to be out of my comfort zone and that would make me feel uncomfortable. Um, but today I'm much more accepting of you uh, for who you are. And so I think over time um, we've gotten to know each other a little better. Even though we push each other at times and nag each other at times, I think we've come to understand each other as people a little better. I would say that to be true in the essence of our friendship is that in the beginning of when you're young, you want to change your partner. And I think as we developed into our friendship, I began to understand who John was as a person. Um, he's not me. Um, he may not be as social and out as I am and not forcing him to do certain things, although I forced him to do this. <laughs> but um, when you're in a relationship, I don't think you can go into it trying to change someone. Do you agree? Right. Yes, I agree. Yeah. So, John, I think... And we, I think sorry, no, I, no. I think people go into relationships sometimes thinking they're going to change the person, mm -hmm. um, but it's the path of least resistance when you sort of open yourself to understanding other people for who they are and sort of accept some of the things about them. Like you accepted me for being a little socially unawkward at times and a little more intro... Uh, yeah, introverted, inverted, mm -hmm. and you're much more of an extrovert. extrovert. So mm -hmm. those kind of dynamics play have played off each other over the years. Now a lot of people, uh, our friends of ours, they wonder, like, do you think our close friendship hinders us from meeting other people? Mm, I would have to say yes, a little bit. I think when we meet new people, when we've been out in a restaurant or a bar together with other friends, and people ask. Well, how long have you toned on each other? And they, we say 32 years. They, people get intimidated by that because I don't think many people have those long-term friendships. Um, and I think, I'll speak personally for me, I do rely on your friendship and I appreciate your friendship. So um, I haven't gone out to try to meet other people um, over the past 
three to five years. Mm -hmm. um, so I can say for sure that I depend on our friendship. Yes. No, I depend on our friendship as well. I think that it's difficult because meeting new people, uh, and I say new people I'm referring to in the dating environment. On is dating, yeah. Because I think you are correct, 32 years is very intimidating to people. Um, and then, like, people say that they see, like, a stare of, a loving stare of, you know, where we might be engaging in each other. But I think that's just history. Yeah, I think so. And I think um, any romantic connections that we establish over time... Um, They'll just have to get used to it. In my opinion, anyone I meet romantically will have to get used to it. They'll have to understand that Corey is part of my family. He is my best friend. He is um, someone who's not going to be going anywhere. Maybe we don't call each other every day like we do, um, but there will probably have to be some um, changes to how we communicate. Um, <laughs> what? But, <laughs> See, that's why I think where I got to like, why does that have to change? I mean... If I, if you have a brother or a sister, you talk to them every day, just because we were exes doesn't mean that has to stop. I look at it that if I were to engage or have a new relationship, that, not that I'm saying that we're in a threesome, but that person would have to be able to Oh yeah, that person would have to be uh, with to us. Accept. Yeah. They would have to be your friend as well. Right, right. We're y'all too. If I'm not around, y'all can hang out and get along without me in that in a setting. Like if I if y'all are in my house and you I go to the store, you two have to be able to talk and laugh and communicate yeah, but and I, watch but I, movies yeah. together and you should be able to spend the night. I agree, but at the same time, I shouldn't be able to call you at 10 o'clock on a Friday or a Saturday night if you're with your person um, hanging out and having dinner or going to the movies with them or whatever. I can't expect to call you like I can now. I can expect to call you on a Friday or Saturday night and you're going to answer the phone. See, I disagree. I feel like if we're not, if I was with somebody and I'm not going to the movie, if we're not doing anything, you can call me. We should be able to talk on the phone like we normally do. What the hell? I mean, to me, that's like, that's changing for another person. That is what the, the, the context of our friendship is. We don't have sex. We are friends. You're like, I'm an only child. You're like a brother to me. That person just has to understand that. You don't agree? No, I agree to some de I agree to, to and some see, that's degree. That's why I feel degree. where people always say, well, Corey, I think you'll be upset when John has to see you will change a little bit. Our dynamic of our uh, friendship. Okay. I, I probably won't. But I mean, what? But do you I mean, because we are unique, as you just mentioned, 32 years as being best friends and friends. And having a past of being intimate partners, what do you think is truly necessary for people to be friends with their exes? Do you think that in today's world, can people be friends with their exes? I think it's possible. And I have a cousin who's friends with his ex as well. Um, so I think it is possible. Um, but like I said, we separate, we didn't speak for a good year. It was about a good year, um, where we sort of took time to sort of reflect on ourselves and figure out how we were going to live on our own. I think, at least for me, that's what I did. I figured out how I was going to live on my own, um, and what I wanted to do and how I wanted to put you back into my life. Um, and then I think too, it's, you know, forgiving people for things. It's about understanding who they are and sort of reflecting on uh, the circumstances of the time. Plus, we had a whole history before um, we sort of separated where, like I said, we were young. We kind of grew up together. We sort of came out together um, and experienced gay nightlife uh, for the first time. I You, you took me to my first gay we bar. Had, we, so had, we, we had we first, sort of grew up, a lot of firsts together. A lot together. of first experiences. So, but my, so my other question to you, do you <clears> think <throat> if people don't have very first together, do they, do, is it re 
do people have to, if they were partners at one time, to become friends, do they, should they not speak for a while? Do you think um, that helps? I think it's dependent upon each individual circumstances. If someone has known someone for a year and they break up, you know, chances are of them staying friends. It depends on how tight their relationship was um, and what sort of uh, experiences they had and sort of what they, um, how they care about each other. Was it just a sexual relationship? Was it an intimate personal relationship with each other? I think it depends on how they connected with each other. And as we, you know, I know this is a topic that a lot of my friends, you know, because I think it's an anomaly that you and I are friends for so long. Um, if we're, if to incorporate a new person, do you think that it should be done immediately or just you date for discreetly? And then at what point do you think it's appropriate to... I guess, present a new party into it. I mean, because would you be... I would be hurt if you didn't tell me early, but I don't know how you would. I mean, like it is... Right, I think I think um, earlier the better, but not too early. Because well, it's not too early. Well, it depends on how the relationship is moving along. If If you're just dating maybe once a month, is it that serious yet? <clears throat> are you meeting up every week? Are you planning Fridays and Saturdays together? Are you going on weekend trips together? You know, how deeply involved are you with the person? Um, and that would depend, then that would dictate, you know, how you incorporate them into your uh, friends and even meeting your mother or whatever else. <clears throat> okay. I mean, I, I don't. I, if it's just casual, I mean, I don't see that really. I don't think that's so important, right? Yeah, that's and, not so important. We're saying casual, we just talk about it. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're, or if you're, if you're meeting someone, you're just going out to dinner a couple of times, um, and you're just trying to get to know each other to see if there is something there. I mean, so that's fine. I mean, you, yeah. I mean, and and and, and my, as we wrap up, I want to ask you. I think in breaking up and then becoming friends. Uh, what's the one thing that you've learned in the process about yourself? Mm, good question. I'm not always a very reflective person. So <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think the one thing that I learned um, is that um, after a lot of my own trials and tribulations is that I can be on my own, um, that I can be independent, um, and that... Um, Yeah, I think that's it. I can be independent. For me, I think it was the same because we met each other at a very mm -hmm. early age. Um, that we that saying you go from your mother's house to your husband's or partner's house. Um, we didn't know if we could sustain individually. Right. Um, I think I, that's one. But in my journey, it was acceptance that the person that you can like and be around someone who's not like you. Right. And that it's OK that they're not because I think we view ourselves to want to be with someone mm -hmm. and we have this idea of who they should mm -hmm. be. And I think once you realize at a certain point that they don't have to be that person that you created mm -hmm. that they're going to be totally opposite mm -hmm. that it's acceptance of who they are right i think that's what i've learned and that um but you don't have to my, my last part of that is that you don't have to lose your individual shine because i am outgoing i used to be very because it made you uncomfortable like you mentioned earlier in this conversation i used to kind of go back into my shell because mm -hmm. I didn't want to make you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I think that is where I lost my own individual shine. But now I, I think in our growing as friends, we've allowed that to happen. Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, John, I want to say I know this was torture <laughs> for you. <laughs> so everyone, I want to say thank you for tuning into the very, very, very first um, episode a segment of Life of Town with Corey, me.
I hope that you gain some insight, a little bit about me and some background as you watch. Maybe you see my Instagram or you see John a lot. And even to my friends that are watching, you heard it from him now of why we have been able to sustain our friendship. And maybe I guess the key or oh, the last question I do before I'm sorry, I know I was wrapping up. But John, why are we better friends than lovers? <laughs> Why are we better friends than lovers? You no, know, that's a. I don't know. Loaded because because it's, it's, uh, Over time, I mean, the time we were passed. we were good when we were together. I mean, right, we were good when we were together, but we're, I think we're better yeah, friends. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I think so too. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> You look like you're not sure. Oh, no, yeah. No, I'm still thinking about the better lovers. Oh, but, um, the question is kind of convoluted. Um, <clears throat> I think that because they are very different when you're intimate and then you're friends. But I think I think it would because we have so much time away from intimate, it would yeah, I think it that's, would cause, yeah, too, it would much cause too much con conflict, confusion. Yeah, I mean, I think we're... <clears throat> We've, We've grown, grown beyond um, sort of a sexual relationship because we are still intimate with each other in terms of just being personal and with each other and being open and vulnerable in conversations. So we are still that. We're just not sexual. Right. So to some people who say, why can't you be together? <laughs> right. That's what everybody asks. That's no. the question. I guess that's the point of me doing right, this, right. is that everybody asks that question. I don't think we answered it, but... No, I don't think we answered it, and I don't know that we have to answer it, because our relationship... It is our relationship. It works for, it it works works for, for us. It works for us, yeah. Cool. Well, now, everybody, stop asking. <laughs> well, again, thank you for tuning in. Like, subscribe, comment. Um, my intention was to just show the world that you can be friends with an ex there is you know steps towards that but you both have to be on board to arrive to that place don't you agree yeah. and i think that it can be done don't force it um and you know the breakup is hard and sometimes there might be required space but if it's meant to be in your life it will come back you 32 years so my motto in life is to live colorfully. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this segment and hopefully you'll enjoy more. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Thank you for tuning in to my first episode of Life Uptown with Corey. Thank you.